examples on how to use the HVAC standard calculator. Uh, this first example is on an office building where uh, the customer uh, is located in San Jose and they're served by rooftop units with a centralized hot water system. PG&E through an energy efficiency audit has found the following energy efficiency measures. Uh, scheduling and economizer op optimization, hot water temperature reset, and hot water pump VFDs. Uh, the cost to uh, upgrade this equipment is, for all the measures is around $20,000. And now I'm going to transfer over to Melina to show you how to go step by step on building this in the HVAC tool and generating energy savings and uh, payback information on this. So go ahead and take it away, Melina. Okay, thanks, Brian. Let me open our HVAC tool. Okay, so when you open the HVAC tool for, for the first time, you will land on the Customer Information tab, and that is where we can uh, input all customer information, like their names, um, in this case, I'm just going to say San Jose customer. You can put the contact uh, person for, for, this, for this project, um, and then you can put the address. In this case, this uh, facility is located in San Jose, and one of the zip codes for San Jose is 94089. It's really important to define the zip code um, because that will determine what climate zone uh, we are going to use for our calculations. So you can leave all these name, contact, MP, but you have to define the zip code here. And um, for example, if we change it to um, to a zip code in Bakersfield, this will change the uh, climate zone to a Bakersfield climate zone. But in this case, I'm just going to put it as San Jose. Okay. And you can also define what kind of facility this is. It won't affect the calculations, but it's nice to, um, you know, to, to say what kind of facility uh, this is. You can also set up uh, what the square footage and when the, um, when, uh, the building was built. Something really important uh, for for this um, for this tab apart from the zip code is that we want to uh, we want to define um, the, um, the 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 dollar per kWh and the dollar per therm uh, from for for this facility. You can do that two ways. You can either uh, define here the monthly usage or the annual usage here and then the cost here, or you can just directly uh, change it in, 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 in this cell. So in this case, uh, imagine I just want to, you know, I just want to do a quick calculation, but I know that the customer pays 13 cents per kWh and then that they pay uh, 80 cents per per term. So I'm going to put that here, and this is going to be important for for um, our financial uh, reporting later. And just um, just so that you guys you, you know, uh, there will be here uh, a summary of uh, what kind of incentive rates uh, are active uh, currently at at PG&E. So let's say okay. So our first measures were uh, scheduling optimization and economized optimization. Those two measures happen on the air side system. So what we are going to do in this case, we have rooftop units and we are um, updating the air side system. So we are going to create uh, one, uh, we are going to create one air handler unit in this case, or one rooftop unit. In this case, we are going to do these two measures in air handler unit one. So we can name it and we can create our air size system calculator. Okay, and when we click on the air size system calculator, what we will get is um, our unit here. We will have a tab with the air size calculations, and then we will have another tab with the engineering report, which we can explain later. But first, we are going to look at the, um, at the air size calculations. As we said in the in the previous presentation, uh, there are three types of cells. There are the green cells that um, they define the, the baseline operating conditions and the baseline equipment. And then we have the blue uh, 
um, the blue cells that uh, define the proposed um, equipment operating con operating conditions, the cost, and the incentives here on the on the right, and the cells. In yellow, those are uh, in order. Uh, we will use this to enable or disable measures, and also to choose what kind of um, inputs we want to use for our measures. So, in this case, for a supplier temperature reset, if we were looking at that measure, we could either use simple data or baseline trend data. And the same goes for the proposed. We can use simple data, which will look at these cells over here, or we can use proposed trend data, and it will use trend data for the calculations. Um, a little um, overview of the, of the tool. So first, here on the left, we have information about uh, baseline and proposed operating conditions, and these are the simplified inputs. Um, then here under processing, this is the brains of the of the uh, calculator. If you want to understand how the calculations are done, these are uh, the inputs that are being used for each of the um, for each of the energy efficiency measures. And here, down here, is the calculation engine. So you can uh, review every single uh, input and every single uh, calculation done for each of the measures. So everything is transparent, and you can review uh, and see if the calculator is doing what, uh, what you want it to do. Um, and then over here to the right, we have the savings for each measure and the consumption for each of the, for each of the measures. Um, last, uh, I would say that in order to calculate the measures, you just have to click in this macro over here. Okay, so let's start. Um, let's say we, let me see, okay, so we have an air handler unit that uh, we want to uh, optimize the schedule and also optimize the economizer operation. And this equipment was installed in 2010. Something extremely important when you are using the tool is that um, no matter which measure you are running or you want to calculate, you have to input every single baseline input. This is extremely important because that that defines how the system operates uh, right now. So imagine if you only have uh, like for this customer, scheduling optimization and economized optimization uh, measures, you still have to uh, input all these other uh, inputs for these other operating conditions that will define how the equipment uh, operates right now. So in this case, we have an air handler unit uh, that was purchased and was installed in 2010. Um, this is a 1.1 kilowatt per ton uh, efficiency rooftop unit, and it has uh, gas um, gas heating. In this case, this is more for um, this is uh, this is important in order to to see what kind of um, what kind of therm or electric savings we get for for gas or for uh, heating uh, savings. And then we are going to say uh, that the gas efficiency is 85%, and uh, since we don't have a heat pump, we will leave that as it is. Um, the, uh, okay, so let's see. The heating and cooling uh, lock out temperatures. In this case, we are going to say that the heating is locked out at 70, and the cooling is locked out at 50. So we won't have any cooling below 50 degrees, Fahrenheit, and we won't have any heating below 70 or above 70 degrees uh, heating. And the supply fan um, horsepower is 25, and we have a 40,000 fan, 40,000 CFM fan supply fan, and this is controlled by um, by uh, by a BFD. And the uh, we we are going to leave. Uh, the the return farm. Let me see. We are going to update it to four to forty thousand uh, CFM and then change the return farm horsepower to five. This is also um, this is also uh, controlled by a BFD. Okay. Something. Uh, the next step will be defining the scheduling optimization uh, or the scheduling of the of the unit. So. Um, what kind of a schedule does this this unit have? The tool has been um, 
created uh, to handle uh, pretty sophisticated uh, facilities like high tech and biotech. So in this case, we say when does the occupied uh, time start for this for this unit? Uh, in this case, we are going to say that it's occupied from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. and then the unoccupied time starts at 8 p.m. until 4 a.m. Okay. So this is how the system operates right now. And then the economizer right now, it um, operates, it has a, a minimum of 70% and a maximum of 100%. So that's how the maximum that, uh, the minimum that the economizer closes is to 70, it cannot go lower. And then we enable the economizer at 65, at 65 degrees. So it goes to minimum uh, for any temperatures above 65. And the uh, static pressure reset, we don't have any, so we are just going to keep it is, uh, it's constant at 1.8, 1. 1. so that's how we are going to define this uh, here. So this is how the system operates right now. Um, the system doesn't have a supplier temperature reset, so in that case what we do is that we choose the constant supplier temperature, in this case it's 55, and then we can choose two different temperatures for outsider. In this case, since it's constant, we can choose 50 to 75, or you can change it to 70, it doesn't matter. And uh, this, this one here is important. Uh, this was the fan and space temperature inputs are here to, um, to, to define how the fans operate during unoccupied and occupied times. So in this case, what we are going to say is that uh, during occupied times, the fans, the the minimum speed is 40% and the maximum is 100. That's what we can, you know, when the p &E engineer went out there, that's what he could see. But during unoccupied times, since this is an office, the fan is off. So what we are going to say is that the fan speed is always zero. And we did this so that we could handle uh, facilities that um, had um, different unoccupied operation from, um, from or, from occupied times. In this case, we are going to say that the, um, the occupied uh, cooling temperature range is uh, 55 to 95, and then for the heating, we are going to keep this, the fans run from 30% to 50% speed. And uh, we are going to say that the fans are off when, uh, when the, when the when the HV is, when the a, when the rooster unit is in heating mode and is unoccupied, uh, then the system is off. We are not. This is an office, so we shut down the the system at uh, after 8 p.m. and we are going to leave the outside heating temperature range here. Um, the the temperature at which we are keeping the the space is 68 for heating and 72 for for uh, for cooling and then for an occupied it doesn't matter but we can put uh, 80 we are going to put it at 80 and uh, 60 so if you have an office that uh, they they do keep the rooftop units on at night maybe uh, you can um, change the the space temperatures to you know to reflect what uh, the facility is doing and in this case uh, for example the flow um, the BAB flow adjustments we are just uh, going to keep it as as it is so what I've done is that um, we have defined how the system works. Something that you will want to review is that what kind of data you are using. In this case, we wanted to use simplified input data. I have I don't have any trend data about how the supplier temperature uh, is working. I know that it's constant, so in this case, I'm going to change this from baseline trend data to simple data. And so what that will do is that the calculator will use the inputs here that we put in the in the green cells over here. And so the next is that we, uh, the PN engineer went to site and found two measures. We said that they found the scheduling optimization measure and we found the economizer optimization. The way you uh, enable measures is going to this yellow cell in here that says uh, next, to the, next to the name 
uh, energy efficiency measure name, and what you do is that you change it to enable. And what that will do is that um, it will ask the macro to run, uh, to make the changes that we are defining here uh, for, uh, for this scheduling optimization measure. As you can see, this red, um, this red star over here means that the inputs are different from baseline and proposed. If the measure is disabled, then it doesn't matter if the inputs are different because the, the calculator will always look at the baseline uh, operation. But if you, uh, if you enable the measure, then it will look at the proposed, uh, at the proposed uh, inputs. So let's see here. Um, we, you know, the PGN engineer went out there and he said, you know, we, I think that we can, uh, we can install and stop, stop start, st stop start optimization so that we can uh, turn on the units later and then we can, uh, we can turn them off uh, sooner. So in this case, we are changing the, um, the schedule of the, of the building. It will start at 5 a.m and then it will, um, it will be unoccupied at 6 p.m. So in this case, this is, a, this is a building that it occupies Saturday and Sunday, so we are going to keep it this way. Um, and so this is not going to be a really difficult uh, thing to do, and we think that it's going to cost $3,000. So these are our inputs for the scheduling optimization. We are changing the schedule from uh, 4 to 8, 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. And in the case of the economizer, uh, we found that the economizer was um, was controlled incorrectly, and we want to uh, reduce the minimum position, and we want to um, and we want to increase the uh, when when we enable it. Okay, so in this case, what we are going to do is that we are going to let the economizer uh, turn on at, uh, turn down to 3% and the enable uh, outside the temperature is going to be 70. So we have to dis enable this measure also so that we run, um, we calculate the savings and we say here that the cost is going to be, let's see, $5,000 to do this economizer optimization. Just before you calculate the measures, make sure that you have disabled those measures that you don't want to run and you have enabled those that you want to run and make sure that your inputs are correct. So in this case, we are just looking for simple data for this, um, for this, uh, for this example. If you have a, a project that has trend data, then we will show how to do that in the in the, in the next uh, example. So we click on calculate measures and the macros will run the different measures and will give us the, the savings. Okay, so um, in this case, we, this is what, um, these are the savings that we, that we are getting. The incentives, we left them uh, self-reported uh, so you guys can uh, change the incentive to, to, you know, to whatever you think that it is. In this case, we will say eight cents per kWh. How much is that? Is that uh, okay? So it's going to be half of the cost. Then, so we can say minimum of this or fifteen hundred, and then also we can multiply this by, and we can see what we get. Okay, so we are going to say that these are our incentives uh, for, for these two projects. So we are done with the Erhalner unit, uh, but we did have a couple of more, uh, a couple of more measures. I think that what we found was that we were going to do a hot uh, water temperature reset for, for the customer. So what we are going to do is that we are going to go to the customer uh, information, okay, and we are going to add a hot water system. Um, let me see, so in this case, we have only one boiler system, so we are going to call it boiler system, and that will create a template for, or it will create a tab for the hot wire calculations. Okay, so here it is. 
it looks really similar to the previous one. Uh, it's just the inputs are a little bit uh, different. In this case, this is more related to, to the boilers that this facility has. Um, and it has the same kind of, uh, you know, the same kind of sections like equipment specifications, brain of the calculator, the calculation engine uh, that you can review and it will calculate every single, um, you know, it, it will calculate every single input, and then the the, the results here on the on the right. And so in this case, uh, we are going to say that uh, we are going to input the information for, for the boilers. So let me see. Okay. So this customer has two boilers. One of them is new and is from 2010, so we are going to change the vintage. And the other one is a little bit older, which is common in facilities, and this one is 2,000. Um, the capacity is 5,000 for one of them and then the other one is 6,000. And we don't have the third, uh, third boiler. Uh, one thing is that we can remove this efficiency, but I will say if you can keep the efficiency for each of the uh, equipment, that will be, uh, that will be easier uh, because sometimes it does create some, some issues and uh, just, I would say, always have an efficiency for an equipment even though it doesn't exist for now. Um, so in this case, we have uh, we know from the data that we collected that the building heating load is uh, 6,000 at uh, 30 Fahrenheit outside temperature and 200 at 65, and the starting time is 4 to 8. So we are going to do that. That's how. That's when the boilers are are uh, are turned on and off, and you can say what the location what the location of the boilers are either they are indoors, outdoor, and if they are indoor, what kind of temperature uh, is in the in the boiler room. You can, uh, in this case, we have primary pumps. Each pump uh, is attached to one of the boilers, so we won't have. Uh, a primary hot water pump for boiler three because we don't have a boiler three, just keep the efficiencies there and you can put whichever bogus uh, efficiency you want. Uh, in this case, the flow of the, uh, of the pumps, we are going to keep them as they are right now and the head also, but we are going to change the efficiency to 80% and pump efficiency to 80. This second pump is a little bit older, so the efficiency is a little bit lower. And these are the secondary pumps. In this case, the secondary pumps are uh, not attached to one single boiler. There are secondary pumps for the whole system. So we have, uh, we can input here the, um, what kind of efficiency they have. And in this case, uh, we are going to determine how many pumps we have uh, based on the outside air. So we are going to keep a series. So we have two pumps operating at 45 degrees and one pump at 75. And here we explain when, uh, how the system operates right now. So the system is uh, locked out at, let's say, at 70. We are going to try 70 and see what happens. And um, the baseline uh, staging of the boilers is that we turn on boiler one uh, for the first stage, and we turn off, uh, we turn on boiler the second boiler for the second stage. And if you uh, if you want to understand what these stages are, what the capacity is, I would say the best place to see that is in the uh, processing section here, and you can see that the first stage is the 5,000, um, is up to 5,000 uh, capacity, and stage two is up to 6,000. What it does is that it adds the capacity of each of the boilers that you turn on. Um, the hot water reset, in this case, that's the, um, that's the, one of the measures that we are going to, that we are going to look at. And so it's constant right now at 180 degrees all the time. So we keep 180 minimum, 180 max, and then we have two different, uh, temperatures here. And we are using simple data for our input. Then the secondary hot water pump, uh, BFD and speed controls, uh, we are going to leave them at uh, constant. 
So we are going to put the pan speed is constant and head then here is going to be constant. And then the hardware differential pressure reset, we are going to say that is constant for this. And okay. So now let's look at the measures that we are going that we found for this customer. So I forgot. I'm gonna look at it again. Okay, so we found hot water temperature resets and hot water pump DFDs. Okay. So let's see. Okay, so we have the hot water temperature reset. So in this case we need to enable this measure because this is one of the measures that we found at the customer side, and we are going to say that uh, we are going to recommend the customer to um, reset the temperature to 140 when, um, let me see if this is correct. Okay, so 140 uh, to, to 180. Hold on, eh? I'm thinking. It should be the opposite, so we want Let's try if this. Let, let's see if this works. And then if it doesn't, then we can we can change it. And then uh, let me see. Then we have the we were going to install BFDs on the on the pumps. So in this case, we are allowing um, we are allowing uh, the BF. We are installing a BFD, and we are uh, we are making sure that uh, the 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 pump is at a hundred percent when it's coldest and. Uh, when you know we 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 turn down the speed whenever it's uh, it's higher. So now we are going to enable this here, and we are going to say that the cost for having this one is two thousand dollars, and then ten thousand for here. And we are going to run it and see what happens. Okay. And so here we have uh, we have the results of the when we run the macro. So we are saving 800 cents for from uh, having hot water temperature reset and 2,000 um, 20,000 sorry kWh in the secondary hot water pump for for installing a BFD. And the nice thing about the calculator is that it will tell you where you are saving. Uh, the, uh, the the energy savings. So, for example, if you are installing a BFD in a secondary hot water pump and the savings are in the primary hot, uh, hot water pump, then we there is something wrong. So that will check where you are getting your savings so that the savings make sense. You can also uh, look at the consumption and make sure that um, you know it, all the all the measures are, are are looking good. And you can also calculate the incentives. So in this case. Uh, it's one dollar per term, so we are going to say that the incentives are eight hundred and twenty six oh I know what I did wrong, okay, so I did the cost I put in the hardware differential, okay, so let me change it to ten thousand here in the secondary hardware pump, okay, so now we have a ten thousand dollar cost for b f d on the secondary water uh pump, and so we are going to say that. This is gonna save, or this is the incentives are gonna be sixteen hundred dollars. So the last step that we have to do is that we can go to the engineering report and kind of like summarize all the information for this uh, for this customer uh, and for this project. And so the only thing that you have to do is just create the report, and this this will just. Um, Put all the information here. So in this case, uh, you can you can put whatever uh, assumptions you made here, any project notes that they are relevant for for the project and that you want to keep along with the calculations that you think that will be helpful for somebody who is reviewing this later, um, and then anything about the the equipment that we inputted. So we, if you remember correctly, or if you remember what we did before, we had a we inputted an air handler unit one in which we did some of the uh, we calculated some of the savings and then we had some hot water system that we also uh, recommended some energy efficiency measures. So this is the information. Also here is a summary of the energy savings, um, and what kind of measures and the EUL and the savings that we that we found and where uh, you know which equipment that is. 
and also this is the uh, financial analysis for uh, for this measure. So basically, it will calculate uh, what's implementation cost with and without incentives. What is the payback for these measures? Uh, what is the ROI? And now that we have to worry about this, what is are we meeting the savings to investment ratio requirements uh, for uh, for these measures? So this will be easy. Uh, it will make our lives a little bit easier when reviewing the, the measures. Also, it has a little um, a little section about MMB requirements, just so that um, it, it can help us uh, see what kind of uh, information we will need for our MMB. In this case, uh, this was a, a smaller project, um, and so we are just asking for spot measurements. But you can always go ahead and change anything at uh, at remove anything from these from these parameters. And this concludes the first example for the HVAC. This is for an office building with simple inputs, uh, and we are calculating the savings with the standard HVAC tool. Thank you.